In this video, I'm gonna be going over a client case study in the beauty space where we spent around 17,000 pounds and generated 42K in sales. This was a significant uplift from the performance that they were getting previously. And I'm gonna show you inside the ad account exactly what we were doing, the creative testing process, all of the media buying decisions that we made. So you can see exactly how this was achieved and how this compares to the performance that they were getting before we came on board and implemented a slightly different structure and system. Okay, so let's jump into some of the results. So first of all, I'm gonna head over to Triple Whale. So this is gonna give us our source of truth. This is what we're using to establish whether the campaigns are performing well or whether they're not performing well. This is an attribution software, third-party attribution tool, very similar to Hyros, which I've done a video on on my channel. Um, it's also very similar to Wicked Reports. It's a little bit cheaper than both of those, and it's at the moment specifically for Shopify, but I do believe they're expanding out into other platforms soon. It's a great platform in order to be able to attribute more accurately what's happening in your ads. Okay, so just gonna look at things a little bit differently. Differently. Now, just to touch base on how I'm looking at this, we're using triple attribution. So essentially each channel would get 100% credit similar to how ad platforms do it. So it's not going to, it's not going to partially attribute conversions to each touch point. It's just gonna say 100% this conversion came from this specific channel, okay? I'm also not using um, triple attribution plus Facebook view throughs. That's gonna paint a much better picture. So you can see here the row as drops. If we just look at this column for a second, 3.14 when I use triple whale plus Facebook view through, when I just use triple attribution, which is gonna drop to like a 2.45, okay? So I'm gonna look at the sort of lower end, the ones, the conversions that are happening through the triple pixel and the triple attribution method, not uh, incorporating Facebook view throughs, okay, just for this. So let's just look at the top line numbers, okay? So these are campaigns that we ran, we ran four in total. And essentially one campaign, as you can see here from the spend, took up essentially all of the budget there, okay? So we started off running um, this one campaign, which I'm gonna go into, and Total numbers, we spent 17,370 across all the campaigns we ran. We generated, in terms of conversion value, 42,292 pounds for a 1,504 purchases, so that was across that, and you're looking at a 2.43 return on ad spend, okay? So we had a really nice curve where we were increasing the spend each month. It actually got to the point with this client where they completely sold out. So as you can see here, all the campaigns are turned off, and I'll show you that on Facebook as well. They're turned off right now because we're literally at the position where they can't sell anymore because they have run out of stock and then waiting for a new order, and then we're gonna be able to wrap the campaigns back up again. So we started off with around like 100 pound a day. We scaled up to like around 200 pounds a day. It was going really well. Um, everything was ramping up nicely then obviously it got to the point where we're like okay we can't do anymore they've sold out which is a great problem to have and now we're having to just pause while they uh, deal with that stock issue let's jump into the campaign structure i'm also just going to show you very quickly on facebook just to show you how this kind of differs okay so here on facebook you can see we've got again those four same campaigns and you can see the 17k was spent on that one top campaign there i'm just going to talk through the campaign structure so what kind of was in each different campaign and why we set up four different ones so this one here is our main campaign. So this is targeting a broad audience. I'm gonna go into this in a second, but this is essentially where we're doing all of our creative testing. This is where we are doing essentially everything that's happening in the account, okay? Because you can see it's taken up all the spend. Now we did run a retargeting campaign and we actually did that twice, okay? So we had two different uh, stabs at this just with very low budget. Our kind of logic and thinking behind this was they had previously been running a retargeting campaign that was working quite well. And that was actually the one that was doing, that was in profit. All the other campaigns were kind of outside of KPI. So we were like, okay, retargeting was clearly working. Let's replicate that in our own campaign media mix. However, when we ran that, you can see here just on Facebook alone, you're looking like 14 pound per sale versus eight pound per sale and 15 pound per sale versus eight. And again, if you think about it logically, this is a top of funnel campaign. This is targeting a broad audience. So there is some retargeting happening at that level anyway. However, this has got the ability, this campaign has the ability to go after any of the audiences. It's got this completely wide open, it's broad targeting. So that can be getting us new customers comparatively to this campaign here, which is always just gonna be going after those high intent retargeting audiences. So this has no scalability, or these two have no scalability really. And this one's also better. So it's like, for us, we turned off very quickly because we were saying, well, look, if we're getting purchases at like half the cost and it's at a broad audience level, that is so much more valuable than trying to make a retargeting ad work, which you're only gonna be able to spend a limited amount through anyway. So long story short, we cut those campaigns very, very quickly. This campaign here is actually for a different product. We just started testing this. Um, again, it was just a very small, low scale test. I'm not gonna talk about that one. These other three are the ones that we were focusing on the main product. And just for context, this is a client that's in the beauty space. Okay, so they're selling um, like personal care products essentially. So let's jump into the campaign structure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this one campaign. I'm just gonna segment the account 
just to show you this one, okay? Because I think this is the most valuable here. This is the one that's got all the spend. And this is where we've been doing all of our work. So let's just go through the Facebook numbers very quickly and then we'll jump into how it actually works. So Facebook's reporting 1,960 sales. It's reporting 17,000 spend, 2,000 add to carts, 70,000 pounds in add to cart conversion value, cost per add to cart of £6.20 approximately, a cost per purchase of £8.70, and a return of 300% or 3.06 times ROAS, okay? An average order value as well of £26.64. So just comparing that to the Triple Well attribution, Triple Well is obviously uh, reporting less because it's not looking at Facebook view-throughs and it's also a little bit more accurate. So we're looking at a slightly lower ROAS number on Triple Well. That's why we use these two platforms because they do report different numbers and one is a little bit more accurate. We also get, yeah, we can see other uh, metrics here as well. So obviously it pulls it in the Facebook number, so 1978 in terms of purchases versus 1,504. Okay, so again, it's just reporting a little bit less due to the attribution method. If I clicked Facebook attribution plus view through, it jumps to three, um, 311%, okay, or 3.11x return on ad spend. So you can see the kind of uh, variance there is, is partly due to that attribution method. So let's jump back into Facebook and let's have a look at what was actually happening within that campaign. We had one campaign, okay? This is a really good structure because it simplifies the account. So we're not having multiple different campaigns, we're just doing one campaign structure. And again, just to note, this campaign is turned off currently due to the fact that they sold out of their product. Now, let me just sort these by spend. So in here, we've got loads of different ad sets, okay? We've actually got uh, 20 different ad sets. So our approach is the following. Each of these ad sets are completely broad targeting, okay? So none of these, in fact, I'm just gonna show you, so if I just click on this one here, I scroll down okay what I mean by broad targeting is literally United Kingdom age 21 to 45 and male okay that's it that's all the targeting we're doing we're not doing any other targeting so every single ad set here is completely broad targeting now what is the difference between these different ad sets essentially it's the creatives so what we did um, and if I just take one of these and if I just click on it and go to the ad level you can see there's like three different creatives in here and again, I'm gonna blur, like you'll see loads of this information is blurred out on your screen. It's just because, again, for client privacy, I'm not gonna share the specific details, uh, both in the numbers and obviously the creatives and everything else for that client because they're not gonna be happy with that, okay? But I'm just showing you the, the numbers I can show without breaking any non-disclosure agreements. So with that said, each ad set represents a different creative concept. Okay, so what we have here is we have an ad set that's completely broad targeting, and inside that there are between three to five different creative variations that solve for a specific problem. So also I just wanna note with this, the copy is exactly the same across all of these. Okay, so for us we focused and the only lever that we really needed to pull was just the creatives. The copy was actually the same one they were using before. I think we had a, slight, uh, a few slight tweaks, but it was nothing crazy. So the variables that stayed the same are the copy, the audiences because it's broad and then what we did was we just segmented by creative concept so we have all these different ad sets here okay again if i click on this one um you can see here this one is actually one by uh, a video concept and we've got three different videos in there and we were essentially seeing whether this concept as a whole worked so each of the creators with inside that ad set can be fairly similar. A couple of examples of different creative concepts could be like our product versus the competitors. It could be a customer reviews concept, one we've used very well. It could be a PR pieces concept, that's one we've used very well as well uh, across a range of our different clients. It could be uh, product features and benefits. It could be um, you know, like USPs, things like that that make that product unique versus the competitors. There's loads of different hooks and angles, okay? So we're gonna find those different hooks and angles and we're going to demonstrate them through different creatives and our graphic designer creates some incredible looking ads which we then use for these different concepts now in terms of how we were doing media buying so at any one time we were running between like two to four different ad concepts at once it was normally around that three mark okay so we're running about three different ads uh, ad concepts at once and we were doing abo with this now i know some people do this exact same structure and they do cbo i have nothing against that i'm just showing you what we did for this specific client we did abo just so that we could essentially have a little bit more control over where the um, money was being spent within the campaign. Now, I know some people recommend doing the complete opposite. Like I say, it was showing what we did specifically and what worked for this client. So we did ABO. If you wanted to go down the CBO route, it's totally fine. Um, if you don't know what those are, head over to my Instagram, have a look, because I have loads of videos on like CBO, ABO, all the different terms. Essentially, one is campaign budget optimization. So uh, you set the budget here and you allow Facebook to spend it on the ad sets that it prefers or that are getting the best results. And ABO is where you're actually setting the ad set, like, um, ad set budget optimization where you can choose how much each ad set gets to spend, okay? So there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Uh, however, just to wrap that up, we went with ABO for this specific campaign. 
So what we did here is we launched different creative concepts and then we would see which creative concept overall worked the best, okay? So you can see here if I filter by spend, we've got this one here, top one here, uh, 594 sales at uh, eight pound at 27 per sale. Um, then we've got some more here and you can, you can kind of see the ones that were the most expensive. So if I scroll right down, I'm pretty much the ones that were the most expensive here are the ones that got the least spent, okay, more or less. Or there were other reasons. So for example, they just completely dropped off. Maybe they had a few sales and they just completely flopped and they weren't working well in comparison to the other things we were running at the time. So the ones that were working well, we were able to spend more through. We also created new variations of them, okay? So let's say we had like three ads and they were all working quite well, or maybe like two were working well and one wasn't. If overall that ad set was a winner, what we would do is we would create new variations of the same concept. So just say that was a like reviews concept. We would then say, okay, well look, these three to five customer reviews that we made were pretty good and they worked well. Let's do maybe three to five more that are slightly different styles, slightly different review text, um, maybe slightly different lengths, whatever. Let's see if we can get those working in conjunction with the others. So we had that approach as well. Now, there were times where certain ad sets just completely flopped, okay? So what I mean by that is they maybe worked for a little while or well, they actually worked for quite a while, maybe they spent a few thousand pounds, they were well within KPIs, they were bringing the account average up, and then suddenly they just dropped, okay? When that happened, we, we did a few things. So the first action we took was just to duplicate it out. And that does have an impact, and we have seen that across multiple accounts. So if for a prolonged period of time, it just completely stops working, sometimes we just gave it a refresh. So we just literally duplicated out the ad set, pressed publish and allowed it to redistribute the content and again that seemed to uh, help it kind of have more longevity and more scale to the account so we did that a few times I'd say maybe like four to five times throughout the entire process some of these I think it's all blurred out for you but some of these ad set names you would see the words like run to or like refresh one that literally just means we refreshed it okay now another action that we took was to start to consolidate the winning assets from the different ad sets into one place so we created a new ad set and we took some of the winning creatives that were from the different uh, concept testing and we put them all into one ad set. And this ad set and the kind of logic behind this was so that we could push more budget through this one place that had a kind of big stack of all of our winning ads. So just to show you that, this is one of the examples of that here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, well, like seven ads inside this ad set here. Okay, and the net result is pretty good. And the reason why this worked really well is because each of these are not the same concept. So before, as I mentioned, each ad set has ads in it that are the same concept. Whereas with this, we were taking the winners from those and we were putting them into one place and then putting as much spend behind that as we possibly could at different times so that it could spend, so that the Facebook could spend between those different creatives that it liked that we'd kind of proven to work. And the overall result, the idea was that we could scale that and push that, which worked really, really well. It also meant we didn't have to have like tons of different ad sets, all with different budgets. And we weren't really worried about like tweaking the, because obviously we're doing ABOs, so we weren't worried about like, oh, is this ad set working best comparatively to this one? How is this working compared to this? And they're like constantly tweaking the different budgets. Instead, we have one place where we could put all of our winners and we could just push spend through that. And then very slowly, we could turn off the ones that didn't work. But even the ones that were a little bit lower in performance, we didn't rush to turn them off. Instead, we looked at the net result. And if the overall, like cumulative result of that ad set was above our KPIs, we would be very slow to turn off some of those losing assets because they do have an impact and they do have, um, they are helping to create that result. Now, obviously when they are completely outside of KPIs, we would turn them off, but the purpose of that ad set was not to, you know, creative test, whatever they done the creative testing, it was to provide an environment where we could put uh, more spend. And for that to happen, you need a mix of really high efficient ads and really low efficiency ads so that your net result is actually a positive one, okay? Because if you just turn everything off that isn't like your highest performance, you're normally left with like one creative or two creatives, and then you try and push spend through it and it just doesn't work, okay? So allowing for that sort of mix that's producing a cumulative result that is positive is kind of what we were looking for. So without getting too much detail, that was our approach. In terms of where we were doing the media buying, um, we were looking on a triple well for the majority of this, okay? So we were actually using the triple well pixel um, and sort of data here that it has to make some of those media buying decisions. So we were saying, right, okay, this one's got this many sales, this is our brow this is how we're looking. And based on those numbers, and this is our CPA, which is obviously a really important metric, um, based on those numbers, we're gonna turn things on or off, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I hope that provides a lot of information in terms of how we managed to scale this client. Um, I did say that I would talk about how we scaled it from the results they were previously getting, so I just want to talk about that before. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go back in time a little bit here. So I'm just going to look at, uh, let's look at like January through till the end of April, which is when we came on board, we came on board in May. 
let's just have a little look at what we're spending. So I'm just gonna select the campaigns that actually had spend during that time, and I'm just gonna show you kind of what was, uh, what was happening, what, was, what the returns were. So from January through till April, they'd only spent six thousand pounds. Bear in mind, we've now spent seventeen thousand from May through till uh, essentially the end of August. Okay, so um, we were able to scale up their budgets quite nicely. And let's just have a look at the, the headline stats here. So you're looking at six uh, k spend. You look at twelve k conversion value in terms of add to carts. This is just on Facebook. Um, you're looking at a nine thousand pound conversion value. So you're looking at a one point four six return on ad spend. And as you can see, and as I showed you before. On Facebook with our new campaigns, we were like well above a three. Okay, so we literally over doubled the return just based on the Facebook reported results. Um, and again, maybe this isn't entirely accurate, maybe it wasn't a 1.4, maybe it was like a 1.2. We didn't have Triple Well back then, so we saw what they were doing before we came on board. So obviously, because we didn't have the benefit of Triple Well, I'm just comparing the Facebook to Facebook so you can see the difference there. Because if this is wrong by a certain amount, probably the campaigns that we're running are also reporting accurately by a similar amount. So it should give you a, an overall guideline of kind of how the account improved. So you've got 1.46 times ROAS, 28 uh, pound AOV, and obviously, so they're literally like, they're, they're not even 1.5 times return, okay? So the reason why is they were running a lot of traffic campaigns. So you can see here, this, this top campaign here is a traffic campaign. Um, this is another traffic campaign. This is a uh, middle of funnel. So, so these top ones are a top of funnel traffic. This is a middle of funnel retargeting traffic ad. This is a, another top of funnel traffic ad. This is a another top of funnel traffic ad as well. And this one's a retargeting ad, which actually is conversions. Okay, so if I scroll here, you can see these are all like per click, which indicates their traffic. This one's actually purchases. So this is why earlier in the video, when I said that we actually decided to run a retargeting ad, it was because this one here actually had a 3.05 return on ad spend. So we were like, okay, that's working pretty well. That's why we did the same thing. But obviously when we switched all of their traffic ads to conversion ads anyway, which is the approach that we took straight away. Just that one change alone, in combination with all of our creative testing and everything else, meant that we could actually get our top of funnel, our main prospecting campaigns, up to basically the same level or even better than what their retargeting ads were doing. Because we're at a 3.05 here on our um, top of funnel campaign. And again, that's across 1,900 purchases you know, for a total conversion value of like 51K. So yeah, pretty strong results there. So look, that's the summary of what we did. I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope this is valuable to you. Please drop any questions in the comments below. If you're interested in working with us as an agency, click the link in the description, book a call with me. We'll have a chat. We'll see if we can help you implement very similar systems and structures that we've done for this client and several other clients that we work with to generate very significant returns. Thank you very much.